Um, my name is Tina Hutchins, and I am Rachel's mom, and have been her whole life. So, <laughs> um, but I'm so excited to be here. Um, Patty has helped me with different things on my blog, like Rachel said. I'm, I'm 57 years old, and uh, I have been married for almost 35 years, and I have four children and three grandchildren. And so, you know, life for me has been pretty norm, you know, for a lot of women. And but you know, um, there's just been some changes in the last few years, and I'm I'm excited about where they're going. There's Sorry. <laughs> I have it, and so it's, it's so funny because I feel like mine is just moving forward, and you know, um, and in my heart has always been to just grab hold of life and be excited for what you have and. Um, just a little bit about myself. I grew up with a, a parent that had addiction problems and uh, there was a lot of struggles in my home. I have three sisters and my oldest sister was born with a bone disease and epilepsy and in my family and just different things. So, you know, um, a lot of people have, and have those things. Um, but in that, I grew up feeling very much alone, very much um, unwanted and unloved and, and feeling like um, not important, you know, not excited about life. and. And so anyway, um, I got saved when I was 21, and uh, that changed my life. I uh, had an experience then of feeling like life could be better, life could be different, and this is all my faith has helped me a lot, and, and making me feel like I have value and worth to someone. And um, I've such a, been such a people pleaser in my life, not feeling like I fit in and, and wanting to just belong. And I, I'm so excited that I'm almost over that. <laughs> so it gets better and better every year. But um, so anyway, fast forward many, many years, and I'm growing and confident uh, in, a, in a lot of different things. I actually work in a hospital, and I've been there for uh, almost 20 years. I work with cardiac patients, which is kind of ironic because uh, my heart is to help the hearts of people in their emotions and in their feelings and life in general. And I also in natural work with cardiac patients, so uh, broken heart in both ways, I guess. Um, so uh, I've been there, um, like I said, 20 years. There's lots of different things that go on, and but I've gotten the opportunity to share so many things with so many people, and I just, I just love that. So a few years ago, my mom, uh, my grandmother had lived with my mom for 30 years, and they were just best friends. My, my mom had one sister, but she passed away when she was 35. And oh, wow. so uh, I, my, my grandmother passed away, and I actually was looking for something, a hobby for my mom to keep her busy. And I had a lady at the hospital that was one of my patients, and she did painting. Now, um, I, I was like 45. And she said, I just, you know, do this pedal around with it at my house. Why don't you bring your mom over and we'll go ahead and, and make that something she'd like. So I learned to paint when I was 45. And uh, I was, she taught me how to mix paint and use brushes and different stuff like this. And then it just like took off. And so I happened to see a, paint, a picture on the uh, front of a magazine that uh, was a, like a gardening magazine. And it was similar to this. And it just like grabbed me. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try to paint that. So I changed it a little bit and put my spin on it. And so that was my very first one. And then, I mean, I was just so, just so excited about how it turned out. And because the paintings that we were doing were really like barns and scenery and stuff like that. So then I, I just, I started thinking about we as women, because you know, this, this woman does not have a head, it could be anyone. And then I started thinking about we as women, that we, we have our hands in a lot of things, and we're busy, and it's and we want to do our best. You know, we want to be. We have so much. Uh, I, I I can speak for me. Failure mentality about trying to measure up to everyone, and there's this, you know, uh, unspoken code of the best moms and the best wives and the best housekeeper, and you know, all of these things that we strive for, that I strive for to make me feel like I was acceptable, to make me feel like I fit in with the, 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 the people that do it right, because you know I struggled so much with trying to, with not feeling like I did. And 
and uh, uh, my wonderful husband, he's sitting back here, uh, he has just helped me so much in, in helping me realize the lies that I believed about myself. And that, because we would have these conversations, you know, and I'd tell him something, and he'd be like, Tina, no one thinks that but you. That, that's a lie you believe about yourself. And, and you know, it was like, I, I, what? You know, I was just so surprised about how we get tangled up in all these different things. And it really affects our outlook on uh, the world and, and ourself and, and our relationships and all of that. So anyway, in that thought pattern, I started to do a series of women. And if you notice, it, we have our hands, you know, we have our, our special person in our life. Then, you know, we have our little furry pets that are little love babies that we have. And then this is, uh, you know, of course, a little girl. My first granddaughter is a, is a uh, my first grandchild is, is a daughter. And I, my first child was a daughter. And then, of course, we, you know, we want to take care of ourselves. And then we have our friends that we just want to share time with and, and love and, and have that, you know. We, we have a multitude, and I have many, many more paintings in my mind, you know, because of the things, but this is just where I am so far. I'm hoping to put them all together in a book. I've got poems, actually, for each painting right now that I'd like to put them together in a book and have the, the painting and a poem, you know. So that's my goal in that. But um, so I put those together, and I thought about all the things that we as women do. And I, I actually teach a Bible study. I taught, I taught Bible study in my church for about 15 years, a women's Bible study. And then I started doing a Facebook uh, video Bible study. And it's been going on for three years. And it's, you know, I don't want to just be a motivational speaker. I don't want to inspire people. But I, I'm trying to give people tools that have helped me be successful in my life in different areas, you know. And... Uh, <laughs> There's a whole different, there's a whole lot of difference between just being inspired or just being motivated to do something, but to actually know how can I change my life. There's so many women that I have talked to and, and just been with and they, they have felt the hurt and the struggle and they don't, don't know how to get a different life than the one they've always known. And uh, so, in comes my blog. <laughs> and. Uh, I had thought about first maybe going to be a uh, life coach because in a way I guess I'm kind of a spiritual life coach encouraging people in their spiritual life and so I wanted to do more and then the blogging came up and uh, so you know at 57 I do not know hardly anything about social media and all these different things you know so thank God for Rachel and for Patty and different other ones, my, my other kids too, they're, they're, they have helped me some. Um, my son, he is in a band and he's helped me with my YouTube and stuff. But anyway, so it's progressing, it's going somewhere. But um, this, this is all just new for me and I am very excited about where it might go. Um, one thing that I do want to encourage everyone in is trying to live on purpose. This is something that is really helped me and um, living on purpose you know um, for instance my husband and I like I said we married 35 years and we have raised our kids and then we went through a time when there was just I, I don't it's not a struggle but you know there's seasons to everything and uh, so he was gone camping with his brothers and I went through all of our photo albums and I picked out pictures of just him and I no kids vacations we went to, uh, different things we've done, our, our adventure in life, and I made all different size pictures and I put them on the wall in our bedroom and that was, you know, and you know, it just made me so appreciate him. I want to not just have a good marriage, I want to have a fantastic marriage. I want my marriage to him to be, you know, exciting always. And so I put purpose, I purpose to make him feel wonderful and that I'm so glad he's my husband, you know. And then it's just it's just doing the little things too, you know, um, being being excellent in little things. I found it helped me to not to make me feel like I'm better than anyone, but it helps me to be proud of the life that I can shine to people around and to to be different. You know, do we dare to be different? It's so easy to 
be hopeless and to be overwhelmed and complain and not that there's not overwhelming circumstances and there's not you know things to complain about because there is but if we and I, I try to encourage myself to be the glass is always half full you know no matter what the situation is and you know that takes some effort sometimes because sometimes we don't feel that way and especially you know with women a lot of things we do put our hands to um, are overwhelming you know raising children that have problems or you know um, struggling with people at work financial finances and and that's something else I want to say that like these situations sometimes they don't last forever some people have had a special someone in their life but now they're not there whether it's death or divorce or you know situations and our little our little fur babies that are not there with us and our children grow up so this could have been my daughter but then when she grew up I don't hold her like that anymore but now my granddaughter is here so the seasons in my life change things and I know like 10 years ago I was walking five miles a day and I lost 50 pounds and I all this stuff well you know I've gained 30 of that back <laughs> but I'm on it again but you know it's because the times changed and you know seasons change sometimes we do have that season where we can focus on ourselves and and be the best we can be right then and then sometimes things change but that doesn't mean our love for those things have to end you know that'll, it'll come back now again I am contending for my health and trying to make better choices and and things like that so that's always going on and you know our friendships change there's been people in my life they were my friend for 20 years and I thought they'd always be in my life, and now I don't even talk to them. And it's, you know, it's heartbreaking in a way, but people come and go, and there are seasons to our friendships, and seasons to all, all kinds of things in our life. My husband has retired from his first job, and uh, you know he's a, a people person and a doer, so he had to go out after nine months and get another job. So. <laughs> um, and I'm looking to being done with my job at the hospital in the next few years, maybe, you know, and moving on to that. So, but um, another thing with my job that I, I think about when we talk about living on purpose is I went to work when I was 40, well, I was 39. And uh, I had been a stay at home mom for 12 years, had four children. And when my youngest girl went to school, then uh, I started working outside the home. And um, I thought to myself, you know, I could go to work and make a living, show up, do my job, do what's expected and go home. Or I could go to work and make a giving. And you know what, I still get the same paycheck because I show up, I do my job. But I work with people who have heart problems and they're scared and they're old and they're stuck in their ways sometimes. And you know, but I go and I, I want this experience for them to be good for them to enjoy, for them to feel special while they're there, because they're only there for, you know, six or eight weeks. And, but I, I give, what can I give to them today? I can give them a smile, I can give them a kind word, I can be patient. And so I go to work to be a giving. You know, my coworkers are struggling. I'm, I'm the oldest one there. My boss is actually 32 years old, and so I could be her mother. And, um, but I, I just try to encourage them, you know what? Your kids are 14 and 16, and you know what? It's going to be okay. Just breathe in, breathe out. Just be there for them. Keep talking to them. Keep telling them that you love them. Keep telling them that you're glad for your kid, even if they drive you crazy, you know. And the people that are struggling with, you know, their their um, marriages, or you know, I mean, I encounter so many things because I work at a heart clinic. This site is not just rehab. So anyway, that's what living on purpose is about on purpose that you can you can bring something you know not just float through life it's so easy to just float through life and you know you don't you're not special you know and you don't make anyone else special and we all have like I said I didn't even start to paint till I was 45 we have giftings and we have uh, callings and things in our life that we don't even know about yet I, I didn't ever think I would paint I didn't think I'd ever be in front of talking to people you know Whenever I was uh, a kid and in, and in school, I was shy. And went by, I had to do public speaking in high school and I was just all red and you know socially awkward and all that because of all the stuff going on in my life. And so for me to be here is just awesome, I think, for me. 
Um, but anyway, so that just goes to show you there's things in me that I never knew were there. Things that are coming out now, and I don't even know where it's going to go. You know, I have I have an idea for a couple of books. You know, and um, I, I mean, there's just endless. If you dare to believe and open up your life, you guys are young. You guys have a whole lot of living. You know, and live on purpose. Be excited and live, wake up every day and say, you know, what can I do that's going to be extraordinary today? Because we don't want to just be ordinary. We want to be extra ordinary. And you do that on purpose. That, that doesn't come, you know. We all have to put forth that effort. And, and it, it all starts from the inside. One of my blogs is um, Change on the Outside. I can't remember exactly the name, but it starts with the inside. And, uh, and that's true, you know, when we bought our house, and that's what my blog's about, restoration. And so if you guys get a chance to, to jump on there, but we bought an old fixed-over house, which I, I think to myself, and not that my husband was perfect, but he's perfect for me. And, but, and he's a fixer, you know? Him and his dad used to, they lived in the country and they were builders. They would fix weak spots and, and rebuild things. And so when we bought our house and it was a fixer-upper, well, he got me as a fixer-upper, too. So. <laughs> and he's done a good job. <laughs> I tell him sometimes how lucky he really is. So, <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm really lucky, you know, because not everyone has that. I, I have um, lots of people that I know that their husbands weren't that way. And so I, I'm really fortunate. But in that blog, I, there's things that I talk about that are struggles. And, you know, one is about dirty windows, and it's like the way I saw life. Everyone I knew lived the way I did. And so how do you change the way you live when you don't know anybody that lives differently, you know? And because I was withdrawn, because I was socially awkward, I didn't have a lot of friends outside of the home, you know, in my neighborhood, there was no kids. So it was just me and my three sisters and, you know, my relatives all lived the same way. And so you, how do you do that? But as I got older and things started changing, you know, then I uh, made some changes in my life. I wanted to live differently. And I think that's where it starts. If you want to live healthier, then you do. Start one day. Today, I'm going to just drink more water. I'm going to, you know, eat a salad instead of a, a hamburger. Things like that. So, one, you know, one thing at a time. And if you want to, if you want to have peace in your life, and this is something, you know, I had this inner turmoil all the time, and and it was always feeling like I wasn't good enough. I always wanted people to like me, and you know, all these different things, and. I had to let that inner turmoil, I had to let peace come into my life and say, you know what, today I'm just going to be the best I know how to be today. And I've learned and I've changed and I've grown, but you know what, it's taken effort. And I've, I've drawn things in and opened my eyes to this great big world. Um, a few years ago when I started painting, I actually had like 25 paintings upstairs in our, uh, in our upstairs bedroom. And I thought, what am I gonna do with all these paintings? And um, I decided to go ahead and have an auction, a silent auction at the hospital. And I sold the paintings for like $700 I made on that auction, which was great. But there was a, 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 a charity that I had been studying about and it was called the Hands of Hope. And it was about child trafficking and women trafficking and different things. And so, but, but in that, I learned to, but anyway, I had that auction and I gave that money to the charity because I believed in that charity and I believe that, that people need help. And uh, I'm gonna say something else about that. <laughs> but anyway, maybe it'll come back to me. Um, so excited about things like that. And um, that's when we can give, make a giving, you know, do life and, and things like that. So. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to stop, but <laughs> it's so funny. Something else too. I have started recently going to a nursing home, and just in the last few months, and a couple of friends and I go, and uh, two times a month. And you know, I feel sorry for the people because they they're all different ages, and they they. I know they feel like they are forgotten and they are like, well, this is not what I had planned for my life, you know? And so it's good that we can go there and we can encourage them and excite them and um, let them know that they're not alone and we're never alone. 
uh, we always have people out there to help us. If, um, I, I know a woman and she's recently going through a divorce, she's been married for 32 years and she has a lot of tangled up problems inside. And she's not healthy, but yesterday was her first day. She went to the wellness center in our town and she wants to be healthier. And so that is, you know, and a lot of times we think, gosh, I go over there and she, she's very large and she's like, everybody's gonna look at me and everybody's like, you know what, they're so eager to help. And that's one of the lies that I believe is that I couldn't let people know because I thought they would shun me and they don't. There's people out there that we are reaching out to us and wanting us to be better helping us, you know, that help is always there. So and that's where we can all play a part. We can all play a part of reaching out to those around us. And you know, you don't have to have it all together because none of us do and we never probably will, but we can have a lot of things together. And you know, even a little flashlight shines light in the darkness. So when we all get together, we can all be a great big light in the darkness, helping and encouraging, you know, everybody needs a hand. But, uh, oh, now I remember what I was gonna say about that place. <laughs> Whenever I had, when I lost my place a little ago, when I did that uh, silent auction, one of the things that I wrote, I put a little article in the paper, and it said, when you look down, all you see is the place you stand in, and you see the struggle, and you see the, the emptiness, but when you look up, there's a whole big world out here. And so, and guilt and shame, condemnation of a broken life makes us look down and hang our head but lift up your head there's a big world out there and, and people are reaching out to you and they need you to reach out to them and I think that's very very important that we do that look up look up and see how great this world is it's there's there's horrible things going on there's horrible things in humanity there's horrible things in the environment and you know governments and on and on and on and, and there is but you know what there's a whole lot of beautiful things going on there's a people helping people and people fighting for justice and wanting to do the right thing and wanting things to be better and it starts just one person at a time and then they tell somebody and they tell somebody and they tell somebody and you know if he can help me get fixed my kid at Rachel at her age is so far ahead of where I was at my at her age and so I'm the next generation you know you guys are all a lot younger than me so hopefully you guys will rise up and be farther than my generation and there's so many mindsets attitudes and things in my generation we went from a very strict 50s to the 60s and then I was born in 1962 so I grew up in the really as you know older in the 70s and there's so many things different then than now it's just unbelievable you know and so much information you guys have so much information that you can bring in but there's so much it's like junk food you know we are filled up with the information of junk that doesn't matter it doesn't change your life but fill up on good things they'll change your life and and when your life is changed then you can help someone else so, and like I said, it doesn't have to be all laid fixed. Just, we bought our house that needed a lot of things done. We had ideas and visions for it to be different, but you know what, it was livable. And we moved in and um, we started, started changing things. And, and you know, we didn't just move in one day and everything was fixed. It took years of a little bit of this. Rachel knows. <laughs> and counting. And counting, yes. <laughs> we put the upstairs in when Rachel was in second, second grade. grade. And still to this day, there is no doors on the closet. <laughs> and Rachel so reminds been 26 years of <laughs> And Rachel reminds her dad of that every once in a while. But so you know, but and sometimes we focus on things and we get those things done and then we move on before we're completely done. But eventually, we can always work our way back to those. But be excited about life. If I can tell you guys anything at all, a lot of things we worry about or we're concerned about, they never even happen. Mm -hmm. The, the bad things sometimes can be bigger than the, than the reality of those things because of how we see it and the what ifs. Don't live by the what ifs. Take a chance. 
be do it afraid. That's what we did a little test a while ago to see if I could hear it. And I said, okay, well, I'm standing up here and I might throw up and I'm doing this afraid. <laughs> but so, and that live life, be excited. And there's nothing too big that you can't overcome. Things are hard, but you know what? Things get tough. You guys are tough. We're all, we all have that in us. You don't even know what's ahead of you, but there's great things if you want them. You know, some people are, are they're settlers. They're, they're good. You know, hey, my life's okay. I got a few people that care about me. I got a cute little home. My car works and, you know, I get food to eat. And that's good. I'm good. And that's okay. But I just, I just wanted more. And I, I still want more. I don't know where I'm going, <laughs> but I know I'm going. So, well, thank you guys for listening to me. And if you guys want to ask me anything, or I don't know how much time there is, but it's 12:30. Okay. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I enjoyed speaking with you, and I hope that you had a good time. <laughs> so, yeah. So her blog link is in the meeting planner. So feel free to um, look at that. Also, you can either sign up when you go to the blog if you want to get email updates, or you can just text. Um, that keyword to that number, um, and it'll add you to her email list. Um, she also brought in business cards if anybody's interested in hearing more from her at any time, or getting connected to her. She's on Facebook and Instagram, and she has a YouTube channel that will post like things like this, um, and it also has all her videos on her blog. Um, so her blog isn't just written, it also has videos where she kind of tells a story almost, like so it's a blog and a blog together. And I'm paging while I'm doing that. Just paging. <laughs> Got my apron on and my two Bob Ross kids. <laughs> <laughs> He's my inspiration. So, but yeah. So, yeah. I've got a question. Yes. So I know uh, Rachel likes to take pictures, so I can see where she gets her artistic eye. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, two questions. My first question is Was it intentional that the colors are similar in your paintings? Yes. I did that because I really liked how this turned out. And um, those colors, I don't, I don't know if that's what it was that grabbed me and pulled me in. So actually, I did this one, and then I did this one. And as I started this one, I wanted her to always wear the same dress. So she has different versions of it, but it's always the same color. And I really like that background. So I put that in, and then I thought, well, you know, I don't put that same color in there. So then, I don't remember which one I did. I think I did this one next. And then it was the same, you know, the dress, and yeah, so it was like, I wanted to connect those colors. I just like those colors all together, and that's, I don't know, it's just kind of how it's supposed to me to do it, so who knows where I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I noticed the yellow, the red, uh -huh. and the green. And they just all pop, yeah, you know, I just, I, it's just something different, I don't know, I just really feel like that it's. Do you have more yeah. of these ones? Well, this is all that I have so yeah. far painted, oh. but I do have ideas uh, for yeah. more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just talking to my mom. My mom's almost 80, and I was talking to her the other day, and I said, Mom, I'm going to take a picture of you and I, and of her with her hands on her lap, and then my hand on her arm. So then it's like, because my mom is 80, I'm going to be I am taking care of an elderly parent. My father was killed at, on a motorcycle when he was 40, so I don't have him. And my husband, both of his parents have passed now. And so my mom's really the only one in our life that we're responsible for. But like I said, my oldest sister, now she was born with a bone disease and she lives with my mom. We bought a house next to us and uh, we remodeled it. So now they live in there. Fixer -upper. Another fixer-upper. Another <laughs> fixer-upper. <laughs> so uh, we have them close. But yeah, you know, there, that's one of the ideas I have. And then traveling and uh, I, I, you know, I just ha I have lots of different ideas because, like I said, there's seasons to our life, and there's other things that um, I don't even know where I'm going. You know, and we we have, you know, I love to cook and I love to eat, so maybe there'll be a food one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, you know, I have lots of ideas, and like I said, with all of these, I have a poem already that I've written. Mm -hmm. So that's something special about those people or play, or you know things in our lives so and seasons come and go and that's so yeah my, my other question was uh -huh. uh, what mo motivates you to make this change at this time of your life well you know i 
it's so funny, I think, because when I was younger and I had the opportunity to make a decision in my life to change it, and that's whatever I asked the Lord to, you know, to be part of my life. And I think my heart then, because I had always believed that, oh, well, you know, I don't want to go to church. I think that's boring. I don't, you know, God, and, and you have to be good. I thought God only wanted good people. And um, I wasn't, you know. And um, so then when I found out that he really did want to be involved in my life, you know, um, then I, my heart was to reach out to people to make them know about him you know and I'm not I don't want to think I'm not religious I don't feel like I'm religious I feel like that I have a relationship in faith mm -hmm. and that it's through that and it's the it's the love that comes out you know not condemnation not judgment I know myself you know went to church and I taught class to the kids and and then start my Bible study I did that for 15 years you know I still have problems and a lot of people don't realize that faith is a journey too. And I know that I'm not in this by myself. I know that that is something that I can reach out to others with when they're ready. But you know, like I said, whenever people were first talking to me about that, I'm like, I wasn't ready. You know, I didn't want that. I didn't believe in that. And so I think my that's my motive is when you change your heart and you change the way you think, then you change the way you live. Because I, I can honestly tell you that, I'll just use this for an example. I can, I had four children, I gained weight, and whenever I tried to change the way I looked, I would go on a diet. And I would change just what I ate, but I never changed the way I felt about food. Food has always been my drug of choice, because I, I'm not a, I don't drink, and I didn't do drugs or smoke, and I don't gamble on and on and on. We all have things we self-medicate with, you know? And that's just where we are. And so food has been mine. And if I change the way I eat, well, that was fine. I could change the way I look, but I never changed the way I felt about it. And I always got drawn back. So, you know, you diet and you don't, and you diet and you don't. And that's the same way. Until I change my mind about that as being my source and my comfort and whatever it is, I'm never going to change that, you know? And so that's, that I now I have a health coach and I, and then a program that helps me. I have health books and journaling and stuff like that because I have to change the way I think about. And it's the same way. If you if you want to be financially free, then you have to change the way you think about money and your spending habits. If you want to have an awesome marriage or relationship with your friends, then you have to realize that all those things aren't about me. How what can I do to be, make him feel like they're wonderful or my friend feel like I'm so glad you're my friend or you know it's all of those kind of things that make things excellent in our life. And I think that's really my motive is coming from brokenness, I wanna I wanna fix people now. <laughs> and not that not that I do it all right, because I don't and I don't have all the answers and but I can tell you where I've been and where I'm at now and where my vision is and where I'm going and you know, if that helps, good. And so I think that's kind of kind of it, you know. I I can say that my sisters um, haven't been so fortunate and they still struggle and I can see how my life could have been right now at 57 years old comparing to their life you know and how they are and the things they didn't ever get fixed and so that's that's I'm, I'm thankful for that you know so, yeah. I do have a question yes, Claudia um, she's wondering what kind of advice you have that she can share with her son who is 16, overweight, has depression, has severe verbal and physical tics. Yeah. How can she motivate him or help him in, in any way? Any suggestions that you share? Well, I think that with things like that, and I am by no means a, you know, a mental health expert, but I know that a lot of those things come from a, a worthless feeling in myself and that those were things that you know I felt like that nobody really liked me I didn't fit in and all of these different things because I had such low self-esteem and I had this nothingness attitude about myself 
and that leads to destructive lifestyles because you feel like you don't deserve it. And um, I would just encourage her to always tell him how wonderful he is. Build him from the inside out. You know, um, and this is in Proverbs, but it talks about the there's a king and there's a fool in all of us. And if you speak to the king, that's who rises up. But when you speak to the fool, why do you do that all the time? How come you always mess up? I told you and told you and told you. And you talk to the, the person who's failing, making the foolish decisions and, and the broken person. You always address that instead of addressing the king. You know what? You were made for great things. You know what? I know this is a struggle in a dark place right now, but you know what? Tomorrow is going to be better. And just give them hope that we're going to get out of this together and you're not alone and you are wonderful. And that is what my husband helped me. He's like, you are wonderful to me. And you are my blessing. And that's what made me king. Because every day, he was there to love me and to want me and to help me. And so that's what helped me be different. And that's, we, there's people like that in our lives. And but so many times we hold him like this. And that's what I did trust no one. And I kept him at arm's length, you know, away from me because I was afraid and I had no trust and I had been hardened enough and lied to and deceived. And so, but it was a continuous love of someone. So tell her, don't be discouraged. What she sees now can always be different. Tomorrow's a new day. And pray, you know, just say, God, show him that he is wonderful. You know, you don't have to go to church 15 times and read your Bible three days before God hears you. <laughs> you know, and he can change things. So, um, I'm going to piggyback off of that and just throw it out there because I had the same, not the same, but I've had issues with my son. Um, getting him involved in things with people who are also having those same type of struggles is extremely helpful. It one teaches them that they're not alone and they have somebody to work through it together. Because the thing about children are they are more influenced by their peers than they are their family during those age ranges. Mm -hmm. And so you can be a great influence too, but also getting him around those uh, other children that can be a good influence on him is also them. That it'll do an amazing change and keep on doing it even if he doesn't want to. <laughs> it's what I'm like, like legit because uh, most kids say um, I've been a mentor for years and one thing I learned is like my teenagers when they come to me act like they don't want to be there but if their parent does not bring them they're calling me to pick them up so they want to be there they just have that barrier where they feel like they sh shouldn't enjoy this type of attention or area but they really do and when they see that other people have the struggles, and I think that's what's so good with women's groups. And, you know, when I was younger, and my friends when I was younger, we were all in the same pit. <laughs> we couldn't help each other. But if you can go out and see that there are people who have been there, and their lives are different now, and how did you do that? And they, you know, there's no pet patent answer. There's no, well, you know, 12 steps to this. There are those things that are helpful to us, but everyone's journey is different. And it's so easy to, um, you know, like, I always, I use this word example. If you were in a train wreck and the train hit the mountain, you were gonna find people who are hurt a little bit, but they're the walking wounded. They can get up, they can help people, they can tend to you, they can wrap up your bandages, you know, your wounds and things like that. They're the walking wounded. So they're hurt, but they're not as hurt as others. And then you have other people who can sit up, maybe their legs broke, you know, they've got some bleeding going on. They can't really get up and walk around, but they can talk, they can, they can still. And then you have other people who are totally broken and they're injured and they're hurt and they need emergency help right now. And that's sad, but that's a lot of people. And they don't know where to go to help. And they can't cry out for help because they feel like no one will understand. They don't know where I'm at. And a lot of times it's the broken here and the broken here. How they think about themselves, how they feel about themselves, and their situation. And that's what needs to change. That's what needs 
fixed births. You know, I went to used to work not in the ER, but whenever I worked out on the floor, and they would get a, a, a car wreck in. They would have me go do EKGs. Sometimes we would have other situations. People are testing different things coming in, and they would see what does this person need first. You know, we have to save their life first. Yes, they have a broken leg, but you know what? Their chest is caved in. We've got to see what their heart's doing. We've got to see how they're breathing and see if we can keep them stable. And you know, so many people are drowning. We see that all the time. Suicide and depression and kids, you know, they're hopeless. They don't have a purpose. But there's an excitement about these kids in this generation, you know. They, they care about things, but you know, everybody lumps everyone in the same group. These millennials are these, you know, you guys all know. Every time <laughs> your generation came up, it was that generation older than you always had all the negative things to say. And but there's there's great things in every generation and they're gonna go farther than we went if we let them, if we are there to encourage them and say, you know what, you have great things to do. You were created for greatness and that kind of thing. Anything else?